Hey guys, I am back home for the holidays. I was not intending to hop on the mic so soon. You know, I think there's nine days until season two, uh, season four, part two uh, drops. But um, this caught my attention, so I want to talk about it. I do want to apologize for my voice right now. I know my voice is giving Omicron. <laughs> my voice is giving very much variant. Um, and honestly, I should probably get tested. But I'm a, li I'm a little sick, you know. I will say that. I'm a little sick. But um, I just watched a very interesting video on YouTube. It's an hour and a half, right? Um, I did watch Sanit Chief's reaction to the video because, you know, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just some video saying I'm stupid for what I think about the story and da da da. I didn't want to give an hour and a half of watch time views to a story to a to a video that would do that, right? Turns out it was actually a really nice video, really well made. Uh, applaud the author, <laughs> the editor, everything, because it was really well made. It was a really good video. Um, but yeah, I. I watched Saint It Chief's video about it, and so I do have his, you know, ideas in my head, but I do have my own, you know, I, I'm my own person, guys, <laughs> I had my own thoughts watching the video, and, um, you know, at some points, Saint It Chief and I, our thoughts were the exact same, I'm not gonna lie, like, there's something I would say, and then, like, you know, watching the video, well, something I'd say in my head, and then he'd, like, pause the video while reacting to it and say exactly what I wanted to say. Like, that happened twice, and I was like, okay, look. Anyways, so for the most part, I really agreed with the video, you know? I really agreed with it. Like, the first, um, probably 25 minutes, I was just straight up in a complete agreeance, right? Um, usually with these videos, uh, what makes me disagree with them is that they don't understand Aaron's character right um but this is someone in this video they did understand Aaron's character really well actually they yeah like they understood the character so like the first 25 minutes I had no problem with anything that was said right um I was following I was like yeah 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 I agree I agree I agree but at some point that all like diverged what I think the overall problem was they tried to recontextualize some of um, the words he said, you know, um, to fit the agenda of what the ending was, right? I feel like some things that Aaron said in the story were meant to be taken literally, right? And um, this video, well, that video, I guess, misconstrued some of that, or I feel like that's a really strong word, but like really pointed really tried to mold what he said to fit the narrative that that you know that he tried to accomplish by the end of the video which was if my understanding of what he was saying was correct that Aaron wanted to do the rumbling just because that's his nature right uh, his nature is so violent that he wanted to do the rumbling and more than anything else he wanted his friends to be safe Right, and that's why he stopped, because in order to complete the rumbling, he would have had to kill his friends, right? And there's a lot of false dichotomies in the video, right? But we'll get into that. There's a lot of, I feel, binary thoughts when it comes to the video, how either Aaron does the full rumbling, friends die, or Aaron does not do full rumbling, friends don't die, Aaron experienced slither of freedom that he wanted, and then he pay for his sins. Like, uh, I don't think it's as binary as that. And um, the video, in the video, the person who made it says a few times, which kind of bothered me, this is the only way the series could have ended. This is the only way, only, only, only. I hate words like always, never, only, you know, stuff like that just really takes me off. And that's kind of what prompted me to make a video you know saying it chief's video is enough right but it i just felt like i i had to hop on the mic i did i did feel compelled to so here i am anyway let's get to my points i have a lovely um apple notes <laughs> um so let's get into my first point what the first problem i had was 
if we are to believe everything said in that video, right, the video is completely right, everything he said is completely right, then there is so much in the series that isn't even necessary to the series overall message, right? If the series message is all this philosophical, like, oh, free will doesn't exist, choices aren't real, da da da, there is so much in the story that just never needed to be highlighted as it had, right? I have some examples for you also. Like, why, why do we have so much emphasis on um, Levi, on his speech about choices and stuff, right? Why do we have so much um, emphasis and build up on Aaron learning to trust himself over trusting others and, and his choices altogether, right? Um, oh, are you going to believe in me? If everything in the story was ending on a point that free will doesn't exist, choices aren't real, why do we why do we why do we get that then like what is the point of that scene then there is none like on top of that whole a choice with no regrets da 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 choices 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 all of that what else becomes like just redundant is his story his entire arc right she's somebody who has to learn to trust herself to live for herself right what what what's the point of that then but put, put put a fork in that. We're going to get right back to that. I swear. My second problem with that video is why was Aaron acting in paths, telling the Paradisians he cared about them, telling them that his only choice for their survival is a complete rumbling? Why is he doing all of that? You know, giving them... <sighs> I've just made so many videos about this stuff that it's like... I would love if somebody just made the perfect video answering all the questions, which this video attempts and I applaud, right? That video really tried and I applaud that because that is a theory. What that video becomes is a theory. It's not the end all be all. It's not, this is the truth, right? This is how somebody contextualized what they read. You know, they're choosing to take, you know, some of the things Aaron said as metaphor, da da da, oh, and whatnot, right? But, you know, looking at some of the things he says as more literal and taking the manga for what it is, using evidence from the story itself, that's where we get to the conclusion about Aaron's character. That's how most of the theories were made, using the evidence in the story and I don't think it's fair to assume that this many people have contextualized the manga wrong and you're the only right person I don't think that's a fair assumption anyways what was I saying why is he acting in par empaths telling the paradisians he cares about them that he's fighting for them that he's gonna you know da -da -da. I, I agree that he doesn't care about restoring the Eldian Empire I agree with that 100% but I do not agree that he doesn't care about the people of Paradise Island, you know, because one of his biggest things were we didn't do anything. We were just born and they hate all of us. All we did was become people. We, we were born into this world and everyone hates us. No, I'm going to stand up for what's right. The people of Paradise did nothing and they deserve to live simply for being born. They deserve freedom. Therefore, these are the people, the whole world, infringing on their freedom. I'm going to do something about it. I have the power to. I'm going to. And that's where the series ends up. That That's where Aaron ends up. And it makes total logical sense. So another point the video establishes towards the end is that Aaron only cared about his friends. And in that regard, then again, I ask, why does he bring the entire Paradise Island into paths and tell them, hey, I'm fighting for you guys. If he only cared about his friends, he should have, you know, like, he could have done anything, right? But if he, if, if I, if I only cared about my friends, let's say I'm Aaron, right? Let me self-insert. Oh, let's say I'm Aaron. I only care about my friends living. I'd be like, hey, um, so by the way, guys, I'm going to do this like crazy thing, the rumbling. Um, I'm only going to do like 80%, right? I'm only going to kill 80% of humans, okay outside of the walls so if you you know just hang tight in paradise while i do that and then towards the end 
get Hanji or something to fly the blimp over and then come kill me. Okay, I want you guys to live, right? But no, we get the exact opposite of that. He, they come, right? You know, the Jaegerists do try to stop them. They do. But not because Aaron cares about them, but because they're going to try and stop Aaron and they would like to live, right? And them stopping Aaron prevents them from living. So that is why they tried to stop the Avengers from finding Aaron, right? He does uh, have them like locked up or whatever. So yeah, he did do one very weak preemptive preventative uh, measure to try and keep them in paradise. Uh, but you know, it obviously doesn't work, obviously. And that is something that Sanit Chief brought up. Like, if he truly only cared about their safety, why didn't he try harder to keep them in paradise? But no, he, he, what he cared about was freedom, right? So he's like, you, my precious friends, get the freedom to try and stop me if you'd like to, right? And, and you know, they got caught up in it. And like he said, he didn't know if they would survive. He did not know if his friends would survive the rumbling. So then tell me now how he thought, oh yeah, 80% and then the Avengers come kill me. How did he think that? How, how, how was that a possible option? How did he think that if he didn't even, and that's never addressed in the video. The fact that he did not know if his friends would survive, never even addressed in the video. Because he didn't. Because Hanji didn't survive. He did not know who would survive. So he ran the risk of killing 80% of the world and then killing everybody going after him to like stop him too. And then what? He just stops at 80% and then his friends are dead too because he didn't know how long they'd survive. So the, he just stops the rumbling at 80% and he's like, wow, no one stopped me. Ooh. Okay. Well, and then what? Does he kill the remaining 20% or does he say, I, an Eldian, am going to stop myself. I'm, I'm a hero since all of my friends are dead. No one is left alive to stop me. What? Like he did not know they were going to survive at all. So it's just, it, you know, that needs to be addressed. I'm not, I'm not good with the theories, right? I'm not really good at theories. So picking up from that, you know, someone who agrees with the invaders, uh, video, the theory, explain that part to me then. Um, the video also makes a point to say that like, oh, Aaron's like bloodthirsty or whatever. It was in his nature all along to do the rumbling, da -da -da, which I agree with. But it just makes it seem like, um, the video makes it seem like it was his intention regardless if there was, you know, if there was no racism, if they weren't being subjugated, if da -da -da -da, if the events of the story weren't the events of the story, that if this power landed in Aaron's hands, he would have chose to do all of this regardless, which I think is asinine. I think that's completely asinine. Yes, he was bored with with his mundane life everyone is most people are you know um armin you know he was he was fine with the simpler things in life right he was fine with like running up a hill with aaron and mikasa mikasa just wanted to be by aaron right but i don't know like boring town's mundane life is boring you know and i feel like that just further highlights the fact that Aaron wasn't all that, you know, deep for Mikasa. Like, why why isn't just being by her side enough for him, right? Um, I don't think it's just inherently because he was bloodthirsty and blah, 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 blah. And, yeah, he, he is like, I want something to happen, right? Right before the wall crashes or whatever, uh, before Reiner destroys the wall, he's like, I want something to happen and I'm so bored. <laughs> but I don't think that necessarily means... He just wanted something horrific to happen just because he's bored. I don't think that's what that means at all. But as I was saying, if he was that bloodthirsty, right, as the video paints him out to be, if he was as bloodthirsty as that, wouldn't he do anything in his power to keep his friends from the battlefront so he can flatten out the earth as he tried, as he planned? Hmm? 
Him being stopped isn't inevitable. You know, who cares if he saw it in a future? Me- I, I'm, I'm stopped. Who cares if he saw it in a future memory? Who cares? It's not inevitable. And knowing Aaron's character, even if someone told him, hey, this is inevitable, he would go against the grain. He would fight to his last breath to try and change that, as we've seen him do time and time again in the series. Oh, it's impossible. You will lose. Give up, right? Reiner said some stuff like that to Aaron before. And what does he do? Zeke said that stuff to Aaron before. And what does he do? He breaks the physics of paths, breaks out of the chains. And he's like, no, I don't care how improbable my success is. I'm going to do it, right? And now he has everything. He has the power. He is the most powerful being in the series, right? And you mean to tell me, oh, a future memory of this, of me losing, oh, well, I guess I'm not going to try then. He doesn't even try. He's asleep for the entire rumbling. It makes no sense. And if he's so bloodthirsty, then why is he asleep for it? You know, I don't want this to seem like I think he's wrong, but um, if this is what Isayama was going for, we needed more evidence of that. Like, just honestly, for real, we really did need more evidence of that. As he's killing these people, we need Aaron celebrating, not kid Aaron in paths on the clouds, freedom, da da We need in real time, real life Aaron as he's killing people, we need him cheering. We need him excited. We need him, yeah, this is what I wanted. This, I, I'm so happy this came to fruition. We need something like that. If that's, if he's bloodthirsty and this is just what he wanted to do to uh, fulfill his blood fetish or something, right? We need him cheering in, in the Titan's mouth or whatever. We need him excited, happy. And then, yeah, I I believe that he was getting off on it. I believe he was getting off. Yeah, of course. But you have him apologizing, crying to Ramsey. Uh, anyway, as Sainit Chief said, I don't, I just don't, I'm not following how Aaron wouldn't, you know, why didn't he just tell his friends, hey, I saw the future and the only way you guys can live is if I do this rumbling, right? And he just tells his friends that. Or he just tells them literally, hey, I want you guys to come in after I kill 80% of the world and, you know, and try and and stop me. I'll I'll stop. I'll, you know, like, it won't be hard for you. I'm going to give it to you. I'm not going to, like, fight you for real. Come in after I kill 80%. The world will think you're heroes. And then the world and Paradis can try and work something out. I don't know why he didn't tell them that. Why was there so much mystery? Why was he so quiet about it? You know, if that was his intentions. If his intentions were so noble. Um, if he loved his friend so much, right? Or if he was so bloodthirsty, right? If the intent was getting people to stop him, why not bring all the Paradisians in, in, into the in paths? Hey, I'm a bad guy, right? I am not doing this for you guys. I am just going to go on a killing spree. And there's nothing you can do about it, right? Then more people would be down to stop him. That would make a little bit more sense, you know? Then there wouldn't be a fascist, Jaegerist regime in Paradise left after Aaron dies. You know? that, that it, it, Like, it just, it can't choose if Aaron's noble... Or if he's bad. And I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back to that, right? In the video, he kind of chalks it up to, like, uh, some paradox of free will and um, whatnot. And knowing the future and free will and whatever. But we literally spent the series watching this character. And when have you ever seen Aaron kneel down and submit to, like, anyone's will? And then that begs the question, what was the point of the scene with Levi? Oh, he's a real monster. It's his spirit. He will never submit to anyone. Like, what? It, it, so many things are just rendered useless, right? By how the series ends. And if, you know, we're to believe this video as fact, as Isayama's true intentions, 
still so many things are rendered useless. You know, there's no patching up the holes. There really isn't any. Um, what else did I want to say? Literally watch Aaron go, go against everyone's will, including his mom's. He won't even listen to his mom. And you mean to tell me that just because he gets some vision of the, the future that he, what, doesn't like, because he doesn't want to die, right? He says himself, the last chapter, oh, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Right? He says that himself. And he doesn't want to die, obviously, achieving nothing, right? Yet that's exactly what happens. And you, you're trying to convince me that this character that knew the Lelouch ending would never work would be okay with dying, attempting something that he knows would never work. Address the entire manga. That's the thing about these videos. They leave out pieces. Address the entire manga. The only way to make a good argument is to address the, the holes. You have to address the holes. So like Saint It Chief said, you have to address the fact that if the future is determined already, what is the point of Aaron sending memories back to Grisha? What is the point of that? And if what Aaron sent to Grisha is so vile, I'll get there. I'll, if it's so vile, okay, I'll, I'll get there. Hold on. Let me go in order here. Um, my third thing. The series could have ended in a lot of different ways. I don't like how invaders continue to say only in words like that. Only, never, and always. Those words really, like, I don't like them. They bug me. Uh, I already said that in the beginning of this video. But it could have ended in a lot of different ways. Well, I, I agree, though, that it was in Aaron's nature to, to do the rumbling. And the series had to end in a rumbling. There is no debating that. It had to end that way, right? But, you know, you can watch my video on all the theories of how this series is going to end. And all of them made sense, except the Madagascar one, obviously. That one was kind of a joke. But all of those could have worked as the ending. And all of those would have been in character for Aaron and would have been in character for everyone else. All of those could have worked. So I don't like how, um, you know, someone uses something as broad as philosophy to be their main backup for how a series had to end. You know, the most interesting and most dangerous thing about philosophy is when you break it down, when you, you know, boil everything back to philosophy, words start to lose their meaning. Words don't mean anything anymore. And again, I'm going to reference Saint Chief's video. He, he brought up the good point about like, you know, when you use philosophy, and then you bring up the words like slave and free. They don't mean anything, right? Especially in the series where people love to bring up Kenny saying everyone is a slave to something. If everyone is a slave, then no one is a slave. If everyone is the color purple, then, you know, no, no one's a color. Everyone is one thing. If everyone's purple you know if everything in the world is purple color doesn't exist what's that thing from the incredibles if everyone's super then no one is if everyone has powers then powers don't exist if everyone is a slave then slavery doesn't exist you know so when you boil everything down to philosophy everything has the the potential to lose its meaning, you know, because what philosophy does is it breaks down terms to its most fundamental meaning. What does it mean to be a slave? Well, you don't have free will. What does it mean to not have free will? Well, you can't choose your actions. What does it mean to not choose? You can't decide what your actions are. What is a decision? You know, it just never ends. And to make a series is to make commentary on what that thing means, you know? <clears throat> uh, people are saying, oh yeah, like, the point of the series is that war never stops. If you're making commentary on racism, on war, what is your idea about it? It never stops. We get it. So what, what, what are we to learn from this? We understand the perpetual nature 
and the cycle of hatred and so on and so forth. That's why we thought we were coming to an end, you know? That's why the rumbling happened, to end the cycle of hatred. So the fact that he doesn't complete the rumbling makes the story lose its meaning. Because we, 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 we live this reality where it, it goes on and on and on. And the manifestation of that is the rumbling. And that's how it ends. <clears throat> that's how the series is supposed to end. In world peace by some means, right? And Aaron's decision is the only means in which there will be world peace would be to get rid of the racist individuals, right? He even says, the problem here is the world and my race doesn't get along. I have the power to protect my race. You know, I'm going to solve the problem. That's where Aaron's character leads. And, and we watch that happen and it makes perfect sense. Well, like I said, really go watch that video that I made about all the different theories because it could have ended in any of those ways and made a lot more sense than the ending we got. If he was so bloodthirsty, why didn't he keep his friends uh, safe? Or Because well, the two things he says is he's bloodthirsty and he cares about his friends only. Not Eldia, not Paradis, just his friends, right? And the fact that he doesn't address what he says to the Paradisians um, help, help me reach this conclusion, right? That he doesn't care about Paradis, actually. Just because it gets carpet bombed, right? He just cares about his friends. And he just cares about killing people. Because that's what he wanted to do the entire time. He always wanted to kill people. That was his just that was his goal. The series could have ended with him doing some kind of... You know, like Santa Chief said. I'm going to keep saying it. He could have kept them in paths. And then he kills the whole world, right? And then his friends have to live. And, you know, maybe he dies of the curse or whatever. Maybe Ymir consumes him or something, you know? And then his friends have to live with the aftermath of that. Or then maybe he... See, that's a whole different thing. Maybe he uh, lives with the aftermath of that. Maybe his friends die anyway. Maybe his friends can never get out of paths. So he did everything for his friends, and yet it was for nothing because they're stuck in paths now, you know? Uh, maybe Ymir keeps them all prisoner, you know? Uh, maybe Ymir... Uh, I don't know. Whatever. It doesn't matter. The, the point is, it could have ended in a lot of different ways. It made sense. It doesn't all just boil down to philosophy. You know, there's a lot of heavily philosophical um, conversations to be had about this series, but it, but at the same time, there is a story to be told here. Like, what 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 is the... What's being answered by the way this series ends is my real question. Um, you know, like... <sighs> you know, what is freedom? We, 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 we understand that, that, that is a heavily philosophical topic that this, um, series explores, right? Um, but we're, we're watching someone with free will attempt that. So the determinism, I don't really see being a thing because we watch this character who stands for like going against the grain. Cause that's what we've watched his character do the entire series. We're watching him come to a decision yeah maybe he is his own mental you know he's in the mental slave scape but you cannot be a slave to your own goals you can't you know it can get obsessive but you can't be a slave to your own goals that's not how it works and like saying that she said there is a difference between actual like like chattel slavery and being a you know being a slave to capitalism there's a difference i'd rather be a slave to my own goals goals in which i get to choose you know oh then it's a big philosophical philosophical question what is a choice would you make that choice if you were in any scenario no then how can you say it's real? Right? It, it just never ends with philo making everything philosophical. But I would rather be able to choose my own goals and, quote, be a slave to my own goals than be a legit chattel slave where I cannot go to certain places of the world in fear of my own life. I can't take my little sister to see a blimp because she'll be eaten by dogs. You know, there's a difference between slavery. So what, um, 
Kenny says, I feel like is taken way too literally, you know, and I don't, I don't think it's actually that applicable to the end of the series. I don't think it is. That's just my opinion. Anyway, let's keep going. Um, what was I going to say? He didn't even try to win. Right. He didn't even try to win. He was, a okay. <clears throat> so the last thing I said was that it, and it could have ended in a lot of different ways. Okay, so another thing I wanted to touch on was apparently, in the blink of an eye, Aaron's goals changed after he found out he was going to lose, right? That's what the video says. He didn't even try to win. He was asleep the whole time. Um, if he was really set on destruction, he would have at least tried to kill everyone using all of the powers. Right. No, right, that's so true. If destruction was his goal... I don't understand why we didn't have him out here um, throwing all kinds of titans out, right? Like multiplying titans and just like throwing them out, using the war hammer, um, just fucking shit up, you know? I don't understand why we didn't see that. Instead, we see that he was unconscious or asleep the entire fight. That doesn't look like somebody who's enjoying the rumbling. It really doesn't. But, um... I guess, right? And then we watch him in different parts of the series, caring about Thomas, caring about Squad Levi, caring about all the people who died for him, and that leads him to the rumbling. All of those people died so that Aaron could live, so that the Paradisians could be free from the fear of Titans, right? And then we get that the Titans aren't the actual problem. They died to keep Aaron safe, to find that out, right? And to, to protect them, basically, right? And Aaron takes this on as his responsibility so now the threat isn't titans the threat is the rest of the world so technically unfortunately even though it wasn't spelled out to them directly because they died too soon they died so aaron could wipe out the rest of the world to protect them that is what they actually died for which is why levi's scene at the end doesn't really make that much sense to me they didn't devote their heart so aaron could be killed they devoted their heart so that aaron could be saved so that Aaron could save everyone on Paradise. That's what they devoted their heart for. Anyways, that's a different conversation. Um, what else did I want to touch on? I'm almost done talking, guys, I swear. Um, the fourth thing. Saying it, Chief, is exactly right. The way the series ends, it tries to absolve Aaron of becoming the villain. We saw him become, while simultaneously gaslighting us and saying it was all noble and for his friends. Does Aaron want to do the rumbling because he's psychotic? Or does he want to do the rumbling because he wants his friends to live? Or does he want to do it for Paradis? Now, in the series, he explicitly says, Hey, I'm doing this for Paradis. <laughs> I'm doing this for freedom. The people who born and raised me in Paradis, that is what I'm doing this for. And so if that wasn't his actual motivation... I think it is a writing disaster that it's not spelled out what his actual motivation was and that it comes out of left field and it's a jump twist at the end. Him saying, oh, actually, I don't know why I did it, <laughs> but I would have done it anyway. That's, that's literally him just saying I'm psychotic. Which we haven't seen in the series, right? We always see him protecting people. Now, if they threw a couple scenes in of him, like, you know, uh, I don't know, like, you know, not even Daenerys burned people at random, right? But if we saw him, like, killing some random people for, like, no apparent reason or, like, killing some animals or something for no reason, then I would believe that. Yeah, he, he's just a freak who likes violence, who just wanted to kill a bunch of people no we're not shown him being psychotic we we're shown him being a victim of circumstance right he is in a violent world and even as a kid he can stand up to it that's what we see we don't see a psychotic person and if he was meant to be read as psychotic we should have seen some senseless killings just honestly the, that's why it comes left field that he was oh, psychotic the whole time, doesn't know why he did the rumbling. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a retcon, it is. Because he does know why he did the rumbling. He told us. 
He told everyone. And we saw it build up to that. Now you're gaslighting the entire audience by saying he didn't know why he did it when he told everyone and even said it in his inner monologues. That was never brought up or addressed in the video. Well, why in his inner monologues does he lie about his motivation? You know, he said, oh, Reiner, we're the same. We both did it because we wanted to. Right? Yeah, he wanted to. He wanted to be free. Reiner wanted to be a hero. Aaron wanted to be free. So they both took the course of actions they took. Period. I don't think it goes deeper than that. I don't think we both did it because... I don't know. They, they were both selfish in what they did, you know? Aaron did a selfishly selfish selfishly selfless act right my, this is my my people i'm gonna do this for them and then yeah i might die at the end so be it but we deserve to be free right selfish because it's his people selfless because it's his people and he's probably gonna end up paying with his life right reiner's like i want to live with my dad <laughs> I want to be a hero. So it's, you know, I get it. They both did something bad because they wanted to. But one is for the chance to live like a human with dignity and go where, where anyone else except for his race can go and live. And the other is, I want to be a hero. You know, I just, I just want to be a hero. But, you know, um, Reiner was under discrimination too we'll give him that we'll give him his discrimination but he was an honorary marleyan at that point so you know he did what he did for glory aaron did what he did to give his people the right to live amongst other people like as a person not as cattle like he said anyways fifth point i'm trying to wrap it up quick guys oh my god it's already been 37 minutes okay we'll speed around <clears throat> rumbling is in Aaron's nature cool <laughs> but it's not in Grisha's so his argument is the future is predetermined because it's in Aaron's nature to do the rumbling because he's violent etc how about Grisha when have we ever seen Grisha submit to any kind of authority outside of being chained and forced Aaron sends him the, sends, sends him the memories then is it too in Grisha's nature to do the rumbling or be complicit? No, it's not. So Grisha, Grisha had the choice. So on some level, you have to admit that free will exists within the series. That's why Ymir gives her selfish self over to Reiner and Bert when they go back to Marley. And she allows herself to be killed for them. That would seem out of character. But she has free, free will. And she chose kindness or pity or whatever. Just like Kenny's selfish ass, you know, gave the, the Titan serum to Levi. If everyone is a slave and they don't need to see future memories to be enslaved, why does Kenny give up power that he's been chasing all of his life? Hmm? Why does Astoria have a baby with her bully after promising to live for herself? Why does Mikasa kill Aaron? So, like, can characters choose to go against their nature? And change the events in the course of the story or not? Can they do it or not? And if they can, which obviously they can, then Aaron could have chosen something different than the rumbling. He made the choice that he would regret the least. Like, that that's what the whole series has been building up to. So, this is all to prove that the rumbling was a choice that Aaron came to after the series of events in the manga, such as the Levi Cabo. Everything shaped and led him to that decision, the rumbling. I think it is irresponsible to assume he just did it because he wanted to see gore. You know, Kenny decided to stop being a slave and give up his quest for power, you know, and he dies somewhat peacefully, I guess, whatever, gives Levi the serum, right? So, if Aaron had a similar kind of end, then the series would be saying something. Hey, 
he remained a quote slave to his freedom to the very end that's why his friends died sure paradis is free now but his friends died so the price he has to pay for his mental slavery is great and puts him in far more regret and 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 dismay and now he will never be happy you know that's saying something but what this series is saying especially with the eight pages after is that you're a slave and violence is perpetual and never ending the end do anything about it it, it doesn't matter it will you always get the same result that's what the series is saying basically everything is pointless basically the way this series ends is saying no matter what action you take it's pointless everything is meaningless was that is yama's intentions what was is is that what is that the big idea behind attack on titan tell me what kind of payoff do you get from a series that ends that way cuz another thing said in the video is that the the series ends in extreme payoff and then again it makes the argument that screamy crying whining Aaron is in character and that he never grew up but at the same time it said that everyone has a misconception that Aaron was either lying the entire time or that his character development was um, him acting so what, what he, he acts in a pretty level-headed mature way he behaves, not acts, I'm sorry. He behaves in a pretty level-headed and mature way, right? Um, Chad Aaron, right? And then towards the end, he's bitching and moaning and crying. So did he grow up or not? The video doesn't know which one. Did he grow up or not? Was the character development legit or not? Was he screaming, crying baby Aaron? Or was he the level-headed, pragmatic, um war freaking genius <laughs> that we watched him grow into that we watched him naturally grow into which one was it? it it can't be both like Aaron cannot be both the hero and the villain at the same time it, like that's another thing about the story like they think like Jaegerus or like Aaron supporters weren't aware that this series was turning him into the villain and like like saint chief said i agree this what this was in line to be one of the best villain stories like ever like you know that feeling you got when you watch the joker and you're like yeah i see why he did it you know i see why the rumbling happened like it makes sense you know, and it wasn't just, I'm psycho. <laughs> it, it, he did become the villain, yes, because if I were not Eldian and I was in the world, I would look at him like a bad guy. He is the villain, and we knew it was coming to that. But taking into account everything he went through, it just made so much sense. But then the ending retcons that, and it's like, um, actually forget everything he went through it was just because that's his nature he always was gonna do that like even if there was no racism that i don't know if the story does that or if his video does that guys it's 3 a.m i don't know what i'm talking about anymore but i wrote down one more thing so let's get to it six what options does aaron have what will did he have he already told us several times his motivation and goals so if those weren't correct we as the audience shouldn't have to be filling in the blanks and confused and split down the middle about what his true intentions are. You shouldn't have to go through interviews and AUs to try and fill in the blanks. Now that's the last thing I wrote down. But if his storytelling is so good, why are we jumping through hoops, going through interviews, going through AUs, going da 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 Why did it take this long to get a concise, I don't know, theory on what this was well that's what i had to say about it those are my questions i don't know you know i'm just just a girl so 
Also, I made a Twitter. It's at Brown's Tragic. Go follow it. But yeah, this is no hate. I commend the video. The video is so good, so well put together. And I appreciate the amount of thought that went into that. Because again, like, I'm really bad at theories. I can't, I don't know. I don't know. And uh, like I said uh, throughout the video, I agree with most of the things he said. I literally agree with like 95, 94, 90. 87% of what he said and the video is super good but uh yeah I just wanted to explain where it fell short for me this video is not supposed to be this long like I really wrote down six things and this video is almost 50 minutes long I apologize um I don't know maybe watch watch me while washing the dishes or folding clothes or whatever um I don't know I'm so sorry but yeah follow me on twitter um Again, I'll say it again. No hate to the person who made this video. This is just my opinion on where his theory fell short. Because, you know, technically all of this is theories. We're all just using evidence from the manga to try and make sense of it. Since it's not clearly spelled out, which, I'm sorry, it it's giving writing issue. It is. Anyways, that's it for me. I will be back to uh, make episode by episode reactions and who knows, maybe I'll even get on camera again. Uh, you know, we'll see. Not for the first one though, definitely. Maybe the second one I'll be able to be on camera and like talk to you guys like normal. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. I said it already. Um, I love the video. Go check it out. Go subscribe to him. He's a valuable part of the fandom. You know, he's super respectful. Um, I hope I came across as respect because I do respect this person. I respect his work. Uh, if I didn't come across that way, it's 3 a.m. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, and just know that I do respect you and I respect your opinion. But, you know, I'm allowed to disagree and we're all allowed to disagree with each other. This is just some of the things where it fell short for me. But, um, yeah. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Goodbye.